Are you able to distinguish which thoughts are energetically good for you and which thoughts are energetically bad or, or ooh, bad's a bad term. How about energetically troublesome? See, part of the problem with a lot of people is that one leads to the other. So in this video, we're going to talk about that and talk about the reason that you are not broken in yet one more way. Uh, my name is Jeremy Tanker. Greetings and salutations. I am a brand coach and consultant, a master designer, a ooh, an expert in behavioral branding, and I am also a rapid transformation therapy practitioner and hypnotherapist. And my job is to help you, well, feel better about you, feel better about your life, your goals, and really help you build the life that you want to build. Behavioral branding is all about helping you down the path that you want to be on. Helping your business go down the path you want it to be on, or your products, your services, all the things that you want to happen, understanding why things in life might be holding you back or pushing you backwards more than you actually realize. See, when we go into any kind of event, and that could be just getting in the car to drive and fill up the gas tank to going to the grocery store, what we tend to do is take part in the action, right? We, we get in the car, leave the house, lock the door, get in the car, turn the car on, start moving forward, and, you know, drive to the store, get out, park the car, how about that, turn off the car, get out, walk into the store, find the things that we want to buy, purchase them, get in the car, drive back home, call it a done deal, right? And all about that process, you are, whether you're conscious of it or not, judging, grading, critiquing, thinking, planning, arguing. There's all these things going on around you, whether it be you know, did the car start right? Did it not start right? How much do you put in your energy, your thought process about what goes on in your car? You just expect that it starts. You expect that traffic should be a certain way whenever you go. Otherwise, you wouldn't be going to the store at that time, right? There's a lot of these little habits that we develop in who we are. Behaviors. It's part of what behavioral branding means, understanding what the behaviors are that drives people forward and which really comes down to a lot of choices, a lot of subconscious choices, a lot of conscious choices that have built up over time in a way that guides our, our how we react and how we behave, right? And along the path to that, because one of the most mm, troublesome processes in the brain is contrast, comparison, judgment. The Buddhists definitely noticed the judgment. Um, and they said, you know, that and desire and, you know, there's all these concentrations of, of emotions and thoughts and patterns that they saw 5,000 years ago, at least, right? That they said, look, these are the cause of human uh, suffering, the cause of human pain, the cause of, of, uh, well, our, our core behaviors and, and trying to strive for more and why we need to strive for more. Because when you do this simple process, get in your car, go to the store, go home, unload groceries. It's amazing how something like that can drive us insane or it can be a joy. And it's really all about your perception of how the world should be versus the reality of what you get when you go out on the road, when you go out into the world, right? And it's because we start from this place of observe, interpret, react. Observe, interpret, react. So interpret, when we go into that, that is that contrast mode. That is that brain picking up of, okay, well, this happened this way, and this is happening this way, and this is not what I expect. I am observing, but I have already formed an opinion. I'm going to go ahead and recognize the contrast between my opinion and what is actually happening. And the, the scope of that contrast creates a friction of emotion inside of us. And that friction ends up 
coming up in waves of anger, disappointment, resentment, fear, uh, anguish. Road rage, right? This is road rage. This is the core of some of those emotions. It's the core of, of G. Um, I want to get from one location to another location and everyone or everything seems to be against me out there. It's an understanding and interpretation. It's a trauma, actually, a trauma a reaction, a trauma training from earlier in life. And part of the reason for this is I've talked about the idea that you don't actually experience your own identity. You experience the concepts that pop up in your head. You experience the ideas that, that show up to help you um, guide you through your day, right? These are literally these forecasting ideas, these forecasting thoughts, these contrast thoughts. Because for survival in the past, right, and I'm talking distant past, maybe for your past, you can actually identify some of these things in the here and now. But in the distant past, we would use everything possible, every piece of information we could gather about the world to determine if it's safe to go outside, is it safe to live? Is it safe to cook? Is it safe to eat? Is it safe to be around others? Uh, are we going to be hunted by saber-toothed tigers or anything like that? See, that's that caveman brain. It's the, the limbic brain, the Neanderthal brain. It's all of that coming together saying, look, you have to be careful. You have to be cautious. You have to be on the lookout on a constant regard. And you can't take it for granted. That brain says you can't take it for granted. You have to keep observing. You have to keep judging. You have to keep critiquing because something could jump out at any minute. And if you are not prepared for it, then that means you're dead. Well, we don't live in those times anymore. So a lot of that same basic training that the brain would go through is trained to different aspects of life, different aspects of our modern life. I want to go to the store. So in the brain, that looks like you go to store. Okay, everything's clear, easy. You don't actually think about traffic other people. Why? Because we're tuned into Radio Me. Radio You. It's, it's very individualistic. This is that sense of separation that we gain like between two and three years old. We realize that the world is separate from us. We are not uh, unified with our mothers. We are, we are individual beings. And as we grow up, that ends up looking like a sense of, well, I have to look after me at all times. I have to look after uh, me primary and me uh, alone, <laughs> right? There's some of us out there who end up going the opposite way. Well, I have to look after other people. I have to control other people. I have to manage their lives to make sure that things are run smoothly and easily because they, they're they not capable. It's highly judgmental. <laughs> other people are not capable of living life. Mom, I have to take care of them. I have to do something about that. I have, to, uh, I have to stomp my feet in the puddles of their pond, right? That's a, that's a strong reaction for a lot of people. It's um, lack of trust, but a, 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 the inability to control what's going on inside, to recognize that, uh, that the things inside really matter, means that uh, all that trauma bubbles up and creates this, this whole point of I need to control things outside myself. And when I can't control that, that that turns into anger, right? That's, that's one of the strongest points, anger. Frustration, a little bit lower. Grumpiness, a little bit lower. <laughs> and it's this whole thing of, of observe, interpret, and react. So I want to just throw something out right now, and and if you agree with this, if you don't agree with this, great. If you agree with it, okay. If it makes sense to you, then that's good, and you can actually start changing something for yourself. And here's what this looks like. If you are living your life right now, and you don't experience your identity, but you understand that you have an identity, that you are somebody, that you are somebody, you have friends around you who recognize you, and this is what your life is like, right? And then you say, okay, well, there is a future me, and future me has more money, has a, a better bod, <laughs> right? Or, uh, you know, perfect vision for some reason, or future me has giant house and fancy cars, 
We create a distinction of future me has all of this stuff. The future is going to rock. And that's future me. And to get to future me, I recognize that present me is not that. Present me is not all of those things. All of those things are really what I strive to be, right? That's, that's all of us. Like, when we look into the future, what we see is something better than what we have now. At least we hope that it's something better. If it's something worse, then we're going to work on your, you know, negative mind and try to reposition, try to reframe all the trauma that you've been through to a point where you can see some optimism, see some sunshine. And see, this, this idea that the future is better becomes a little bit of a dual-edged sword to us. Because if the future is better, that means the current sucks. That means right now sucks. Or it's at least not as good as that future. And that means that to a large degree of us, that subconscious mind, that other than conscious mind, realizing that that other than conscious part of ourselves really manages about 95% of our life. 95 who we are as a conscious being only is 5% of our, of our life, our choices, our recognition, our consciousness. And in being that way, by creating that distinction, what we see is that in the future, it's uh, you know better looking, no glasses, thinner. Right now that means I've got glasses. That must mean I'm not that good looking and it means I'm, I'm not thin, I'm, I'm bigger. Now all of a sudden we've created just by looking to the future and trying to embrace it, we've created a distinction between then and now. This is part of the reason that a lot that uh, a lot of people say, well, you, you have to visualize the future and then embrace it and hold it in you, you know, hold it in you like it's like it's absolutely true and it's happening right here in the moment. That's a Joe Dispenza thing. Uh, he says, you know, looking, looking into the past, you get really wrapped up in all the things you should have done and all the things you could have done and all the things you would have done if you'd known better, but you're not there anymore. And so it just plays over and 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 over in your brain. Because your brain and that limbic brain, the midbrain, all those parts are trying to fix whatever happened in the past to make sure you don't do it again. But the thing is that the future is not, is, is just not like the past. We don't live in a constant cycle of repeat. Every day is an opportunity to change things, although we rarely, rarely do, right? We get sucked into that cycle. We get the subconscious living our life for us really often until we decide, okay, we're, I am taking control. You are taking control right now. You are listening to me. You are actually letting this into your, your base brain and your, all those unconscious frequencies and you're going, okay, well, I don't really get what Jeremy's talking about, but hey, He's talking so great. Here's the thing. When we set up that the future is better, that automatically means in that uh, conscious, unconscious, very physical particle, like quantum particle, um, observed self that we are, that this must be bad. And I've talked about the, the active experience in the past. In the active experience, it's all of the conscious and the unconscious parts of ourselves that come up around any basic thought. And those... those pieces, those parts, are built on the traumas of our past, built on the experiences we've gone through. You see, when we go through a traumatic experience, our main personality sort of takes a little bit of a siesta. It sort of just, uh, when we're under trauma, we actually step up into a, a whole manufactured personality, somebody who is able to take on whatever that task is. For example, uh, getting through my master's program I certainly know it was very traumatic to me. It was something I wanted, absolutely. It was something that needed a lot of work, absolutely, and it, and it required a lot of work. At the same time, my mother ended up in the hospital and she passed away that exact same year. That became a, additional trauma. At the same time, I was working uh, full-time, 40 hours and plus for a corporation, helping with their branding, helping with, with websites and packaging and all of these different things. That was trauma on top of that. On top of that, my wife was still in doctorate school added trauma on top of that, uh, you know, just trying to be ourselves in our relationship. That's, you know, additional, I'm using trauma, but stress is trauma. Any kind of pressure on you to behave, to, to exist, to coexist with others is pressure, stress, trauma, tension, right? 
All of these things cause the fight or flight response within us to start to pull up, to start to tighten up. And as it tightens up, our, our logical facilities, the prefrontal cortex, actually becomes disconnected from the reactions that we give. I can honestly say for most of 2017 and 2018, although I was present, I wasn't working at my maximum. I, I know that now, looking backwards, because that prefrontal, cor prefrontal cortex was so far cut off from, from the ability of being my best. So the idea here, though, is that Manifesters, Joe Dispenza, okay, let, let, let's just target his idea, this idea that, you know, if you want to live in the future, if you want to go for that future, if you want to be that future, if you want to manifest that future in your life, that you need to imagine it and step into it. In the book Reality Transurfing, um, the author shares that, look, it's more than stepping into it. It's, it's literally creating a lens. I've worn glasses since the fifth grade, so an idea of a lens is really easy to me. Um, a lens wherein you can see your world as if it were existing in that prime reality, whichever reality you want to go for. And then you got to really embody it, feel it, like live it in all of your cells emotionally. And Dispenza agrees with it because agrees with this. See, my tongue is all getting stuttery today. <laughs> um, a Dispenza agrees with this because Joe Dispenza says that it's really the emotions that create like the snapshots when our memories, every experience that we have is just having that experience, seeing it, hearing it, tasting it, smelling it, feeling it. But when you have an emotional response in there, the stronger emotional response, that's what snaps the picture. And then your body and your mind take all those sensory pieces and that emotional uh, impact, and then they wrap it together, and that's what they store. So that the emotions, when they start to pop up again, when they, that is the core of memory. That is the core of memory. When you have an emotion, it comes up, and that triggers all those neural connections that make you think something different. And that's fantastic. <laughs> Because that, I absolutely agree with that. That is, that is something you need to do is embrace that. The trouble is that when you set up, because that is literally setting up, that future is optimum. That future is prime. That is the quantum field. That is uh, creating that quantum reality, creating the neural networks and the neuroplasticity and the, um, the, the tangled web, uh, the tangled electrons, the, um, uh, the spooky action of things that we don't know why they're connected, but they are connected. That's what creates it. That's what creates it. The emotion that goes into something, the emotion that goes into the thought, the feelings coming out throughout the body. That's why meditating is good. Meditating and focusing on how you feel and picturing the way you want to feel, picturing like the optimum, how could I be happy? What does happy feel like in my body is fantastic because that actually helps create the, the waterfall effect. It pushes you over the cliff of starting that reaction. And once you start that reaction, man, the reticular activating system can kick in and it actually increases it, boom, increases it, doubles it, boom, doubles it again, boom, doubles it again. And you feel fantastic because throughout your day, your brain is telling you, you feel great and you're moving forward. The challenge though, is that that's still moving from a premise of you are broken. And this is what, you know, uh, Disp I love Dispenza, but he is, He's still getting stuck, but this is creating a spectrum because as good as the future is, it's still saying right here, you're broken. You're not that. So that whole spectrum related in contrast, duality right here in the particle part of who we are, the whole idea, the whole energy of who you are is still stuck sort of in the here and now. And all those pieces of you, subconscious, unconscious, and other right? All the bacteria, all the viruses, all the things inside of you that are part of you and are not often considered as part of you other than as your greater cellular community. These things just want balance, right? They just want to maintain stability, uh, homeostasis as much as possible so that they keep on living. They keep on surviving. Their way to survival is to make sure that you don't change too much, that you stay who you are and as prosperous to them as possible. So all of these pieces of you that are like that, 
right? They have, they have a slight... They're not... Mm. <laughs> How to say this? It's very tricky. It's a little tricky because a lot of these things are not real. It's not something I could put my finger on and say, this is what it is. What is currency? Currency, well, it's money, but in different languages and ideas and, and different places around the world. Well, what is the energy? What are these pieces inside of you that are holding onto the trauma, holding onto the stress, training you? I've said before, it's like proteins in your system that the brain releases to feel a certain way and program cells to act a certain way, program DNA to replicate a certain way, change who you are and how you are behaving. So those, those are the pieces that pop up when you want to change, when you start to change who you are to become that optimum future, to start living in that, you know, pretend as if it is now. Well, the problem is that you can pretend as if it is now and you can be super successful. And there are hundreds of people around uh, this country, not just the world, thousands around the world, maybe more, who pretend to be someone else. They create a character of the person that they need to become in order to get to where they want to go. The guy who runs a consulting.com, Sam something or other, that's what he does. He literally takes who he is and puts it in a little box and shoves it down in order to become the vision that he believes he needs to be to create that future. Now, what happens then is you've just taken all of those emotions all of the things that make you, you, all that uniqueness, all of that brilliance of who you are, who you were born to be, all of the I am enoughness and I am worthy, and it just, it compacts it and shoves it down. Because he's playing a character. And there's a ton of them out there. Almost all of politicians are just playing characters. They are who they believe you need them to be to do what they think they need to do to gain power and status right? And the thing is that that doesn't change who you are and reach to reach that future. It actually keeps who you are pretty uh, stuck, stable, stagnant, and it just gets shoved down. And, and how many people do we hear about that have reached huge amounts of success, huge amounts of glory, fame, you name it, and they are so depressed. They are so anxious and afraid. They're so angry. And that's what happens when we try to make up and embrace that future without really coming to terms with when we do this, these pieces of ourselves, these pieces of who I am that trained me from my young age till now, rebel. In a lot of ways, they scream because to them, this is their death. All the pieces that make you you, all the pieces that have made you you from the very beginning, they just want to keep being. They want the stability. They want st uh, the structure of just being in balance with you in the body. And when you go and change everything to reach that future, it feels really good at first. But what happens is those subconscious parts of you, those subconscious things that are afraid, that are scared, that are, oh gosh, powerful, right? They're still driving a huge percentage of who you are. And what happens is they look for ways to sabotage. This is that pendulum energy. This is the reason that there is a pendulum type of energy. Because when you try to stifle that future, even though you're embracing it, even though you are living it and feeling good about it, if you're trying to be someone you're not, then pieces other than your conscious self sabotage. They look for opportunities to bring you back to balance, back to who you were, back to where you were comfortable, back to where life was stable to them. And one of the things that changes that is knowing that right now, without doing any of that work, you are worthy, you're enough. You don't, you don't have to pretend to be someone else. Colonel Sanders didn't pretend to be someone else. He was broke and basically retired and he drove around the country 
saying to chicken restaurants, do you want to buy my recipe? Do you want to license my recipe? I have a great recipe. You need to get this and use it and license it. And I, I promise you it's going to be great. And eventually he found people who agreed with him. He didn't change who he was. He just kept trying till he found the people aligned and willing to give him a chance. Ray Kroc, the, uh, the guy who, who really started McDonald's, he didn't, like, he didn't change who he was. He was sort of a real estate business guy. He refined their systems and created a, an empire based on real estate, not hamburgers. He didn't care for hamburgers at all. He cared about the real estate underneath every single McDonald's location. And see, that's the thing is, you can reach success in your life the way you are. And I know that that sounds kind of hard or weird because right now in social media, you're supposed to try and be somebody else. You're supposed to try to be somebody that other people want to follow. You're supposed to try to throw things out there that other people want to uh, read and absorb. And it's, it's stupid. Because reaching out and creating that persona is literally taking on a character of yourself and not yourself. And one of the ways to determine the difference is if you if you step in and you you have to keep your character on. If you have to step into a situation and keep a character on, then you're probably not being true to yourself. Now, if you can step into that same situation and just stand in your truth, knowing that things can come against you, knowing that not light, that life is not always going to go your way, knowing that you are going to say your truth, say your whatever you need to say, and just sit with it and let others react, observe how they react, and then just stay true to you and how that is without giving into anger, without giving into divisive behavior, without giving into any of those things that, that, that pull you off course, then you're walking the path to your true end goal, right? In fact, you're walking the path to anywhere you want at that point. If you just stay you and stop pretending, it's like this is the same advice that everybody has been giving since high school, since junior high, since whatever, right? Oh, well, don't be friends with them. They don't like who you truly are. Don't date somebody that doesn't like who you truly are. The problem is most of us don't know who we truly are until much later in life. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I'm, I'm meeting people in their 70s who are just figuring out who they are. Because for most of their lives, they've had to play characters. God knows, when I joined the corporate world at the ad agency and then the pharma world and then the software world, I played a character that entire time. Every time I went to work, I had to uh, obey the code of behavior in that workplace. I had to, um, I had to limit what I say and how I said it. I had to stay in my safe little zone. I think most of us who work for others at least feel a little bit like that because you have to in order to work with other people. At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> These days, I don't know. I would rather be myself and just kind of bite my tongue and and keep being myself, but, you know, in a gentle way. And it's mostly been my friends that actually recognized who I am and can look at me and go, damn, he's smart and he knows all this stuff and, you know, I really appreciate him. Right on. Yeah. And that's awesome because I love you guys. And, you know, I, I feel like now... I'm actually trying to find who I am versus being that that guy who is always having to be the 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 work guy. And a lot of it has to do with with playing that character, seeing that vision cuz you know, when I was growing up, my mom always said, look, imagine that future as you want it to be and then like step into it as if it's now and just be it. And that's, that's, that's great, but it, it's definitely putting on a character versus just being you. And, and honestly, that's what a lot of these videos are, is just me trying to figure out me. You see, your brain doesn't know what it knows because your brain is just the connection points. 
It's not the memories, it's not the thoughts, it's not the cogn cognitive connections of what's going on. It's just the connection points that gives you your sense of here and now. To really find out what you know, you got to journal. You got to stand in front of people and just start spouting it. Like, what are my actual thoughts? You don't know your own actual thoughts because when you start thinking it through, you get the voices, you get the subconscious rebellion, you get all these things going on inside of you that challenge your view, that challenge anything that you know. That's why you can't experience your identity because you challenge yourself and who you are on any given basis. And when you try to change that, the pieces of you that are deeper, that are programming, that are behavioral, swing you right back. I guess one of the keys that I learned out of that was from uh, Eckhart Tolle and, and Ram Das. Both of them were like, look, just now, wherever you are now, try to find contentment now, try to find happiness now. Because this, this is what there is. And being true to yourself right now, right in this moment, appreciating everything that is around you and everything that is happening for you leads you eventually into that future. And if you visualize it, Abraham Hicks says, if you visualize it for 17 seconds, that's all it takes. 17 seconds puts it in your quantum vortex in that field of everything possible. And when you come back and you do it for another 17 seconds, it brings it even closer. Another 17 seconds brings it even closer. You're training the reticular activating system to notice all the triggers that will get you there. But you don't need to be any different. You, your identity, our experiences and the way we reflect and the way we talk and the way we do things, it's just fine. That will get you there. You don't need to put on a personality. You don't need to put on somebody that you don't want to be. Because a lot of that's just fulfilling stuff that you were told really young. And the more that you can actually just walk in and without even observing the scene, interpret it the way you want to interpret it. Just walk in and be you. And don't care what anybody else says. That's hard. I know. It's hard. But you know what? That's part of putting you, your brand, yourself, everything out there. It's just the authenticity of it means just going with it. Trusting that you know what you know. Trusting that your brain and your body, your mind, conscious and unconscious, your active experience, your quantum being, your all this crap will come together. Why? Because it already has. You're here, you're, you're doing your thing and it's awesome. So just keep at it and trust that you are enough. And then any given second, any given moment, any given uh, anything, you are enough, you can handle it. And if you can't handle it, you'll ask somebody to help or you'll figure out a way because that's what life is. And then it just keeps being that way. So that's what I've got for today. If you guys are interested in what I'm doing these days or uh, my branding work for the corporations, uh, manifest design, which is my process of vision setting and goal setting and just really building clarity and confidence about where you want to go and how to get there, uh, check me out at www.thinktankcreative.net. And uh, yeah, you can read a whole bunch about manifest design there and hopefully we'll be, uh, oh, so I'm using a lot of the content from these videos that I've done to put together a whole other video series on YouTube because I repost these on YouTube and uh, I'm adding visuals to them because I know staring at my face is a little tricky, especially when some of the concepts I have are, are really nebulous and I'm a visual person and I know some of you are visual people. So maybe, you know, if you're interested, uh, I'll, I'll share when I actually get those up. I just started building a couple of different videos to really, oh, showcase in a visual way what I'm talking about because I think it helps lock it in more and really knowledge creates the transformation, right? When you learn how to see life differently, the life that you see changes and that is what makes this worthwhile. All right, love you very much. Take care, bye.